Hey everyone, I hope you had an awesome week. Last time I asked for your help in picking the next crafting project from three different possibilities. And the Spider-Man web backpack received the most votes. It was pretty close though. The materials you'll need to make the web pack are Mod Podge, a junky paintbrush that you don't mind sacrificing to the Mod Podge, white embroidery floss, you could pick this stuff up for super cheap, like under 50 cents at a craft store, but you could also use string. White cloth wrapped stem wire, a small ball or other round object, wire cutters, plastic cling wrap, scissors, pencil, paper, super glue, and disc magnets are optional, but I'll be using them today. Links to where you can find those materials will be in the video description. First, wrap the ball or whatever round object you're using in the plastic wrap. I'm going to use a rubber band to secure mine, but you can tape yours or even just hold it. Then I'm going to apply a thick layer of Mod Podge glue on the top half of the ball. If your ball has a seam in the middle like mine from when it was molded, you can use that as a guide. Next, take the embroidery floss and start at the bottom of the glue and press the floss on the ball and wrap the floss around the bottom edge of the glue. Keep wrapping the floss around in a circular pattern that will gradually spiral towards the top of the ball. Once you get to the top, cut the excess floss. If there are any places where the floss feels loose, you can use your fingers to rub some glue on the floss to help smooth it down. I'm going to use some smaller pieces of floss to create a web pattern on top of the spiraled floss. You don't have to do this though. Or you could even come up with your own design or just scatter bits of floss on it to create a random pattern. Now we need to set that aside to dry, but while we're waiting, we can start on the straps of the backpack. I'll be using one piece of cloth wrapped stem wire. I got this from Joanne Fabrics and it was located near the fake flowers. Now some of you may remember that I previously made some web lines out of this stem wire in my Spider-Man 2099 Christmas ornament video by wrapping two wires around each other. This time though, let's try something different, especially since I already have the embroidery floss out. You can separate the individual threads of the floss easily, and I'm going to pull out two individual threads from the bundle. I tie the two threads to the stem wire, and you can see I did a section of this wire earlier just as a test, so I'm going to tie this new section right below where that one ends. But when you make yours, you want to tie it to one of the ends of the stem wire. Then I mixed up about equal parts of Mod Podge and water and dipped my fingers in the mixture before wrapping the floss around the stem wire. I alternate wrapping the floss tightly and loosely. Every now and then I use my fingernail to push the floss back up from the direction I came from to make the loops looser. Sometimes I separate the two threads and wrap them individually, but there's really no wrong way to do this. When I twist it enough, I tie the floss to the stem wire using another small piece of floss and smooth down the loose ends with glue dipped fingers. You'll need about 22 centimeters of stem wire covered with floss for this project. If this technique is too messy for you, you can just stick to wrapping two stem wire pieces around each other. Now while the stem wire is drying, let's go back to working on the backpack. Free the ball from the plastic wrap. If you gently tug on the plastic wrap, it will come free from the glued floss. If it doesn't, no worries. Just cut the plastic wrap around the edge of the floss so that it doesn't show. And now we have a little hat for the bouncy ball. But that's not what we're supposed to be making today. So let's move on to the next step. Trace around the cap on a piece of paper. Cut out the circle and double check to make sure the circle fits just inside the floss cap. It's going to be held in place by friction, so you don't want the circle to have a larger diameter than the largest part of the cap. Instead, it should rest just inside the cap a little bit. Apply a generous amount of Mod Podge to it and start spiraling floss on it, just like before by starting on the outer rim and working your way towards the middle. This piece here is going to be the back of the backpack. Hmm, that's kind of confusing. Uh, it's going to be the part that lays against Spider-Man's back. We'll need to wait for this to dry before we move on. 
Once it is dry, we need to flip it over and cover the back side of the circle we were working on before. But before we get too far, we need to make a little hinge by cutting a small piece of floss and gluing it to the circle. I'm also going to put in a disc magnet before I spiral the floss again. You don't have to use a magnet, but I'll be using it to connect the backpack to the straps. If you don't have magnets, you can just glue the straps directly to the back piece later. And now we need to wait for that to dry again. Next, apply some glue to the inside of one side of the cap and attach the floss hinge on the circle to it. It might help if you push the circle inside the cap a little bit to help hold the hinge in place while the glue is drying. Now let's shape the straps while we're waiting. You want to take the stem wire and make a figure eight with it. It will loop around both the Spider-Man's arms and cross at the back. Check the front of your figure to make sure the straps are as loose or as tight as you want. Then twist the loose leftover bit of wire around where the wire intersects. And double check to make sure that you can remove the straps from your figure without untwisting them. Then you can use the wire cutters to trim off the excess wire. After the backpack is dry, check to make sure the hinge is glued in place. And then I'm going to take a small piece of parchment paper or wax paper and put it on top of the magnet in the backpack. Then I attach a second magnet to the first. The paper is going to prevent the two magnets from getting super glued together. Apply a bit of super glue to the topmost magnet and stick it to the intersection of the straps. Wait for that to dry. There sure is a lot of waiting on this project, isn't there? But the good news is, once it's dry, you're done. This pack opens up so Spider-Man can store little things inside, like a change of clothes, or in this case, pizza. You can also take the pack off the straps and stick it on a wall in case Spidey doesn't want to haul everything around, and we'll come back for it later. Before you go, I have several viewer photos to share from people just like you who gave one of my projects a try. First up is Dee Griffin, who made the Doctor Strange magic effects. Those turned out really nice. Peekapool, who has a channel of his own here on YouTube, made the Cyclops Optic Blast effect. It looks like Cyclops has had enough of putting up with Deadpool. Next is Darth Eye from Instagram. He put his own spin on my Taskmaster Energy Shield project to convert it to Force Discs for Invisible Woman. That's an awesome idea. Then Kenny made the Spider Sense effect. It's a good thing too, because Spidey's going to need it with all those villains surrounding him. Finally, JRQ created a fabric custom cape for Sentry. I think all of your projects turned out great. If you want to give any of these projects a try, check out my playlist of crafting for action figures and other toys for the instructions. And if you decide to make any of my crafts, I'd love to see your photos too. Just make sure to say whether I have your permission to share your photos in a future video and what name or nickname I should say for you. I hope to see you all next week when we make something new. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stay updated. And thanks for watching.